Good morning, church. Thank you for joining us today and worshiping together online. Look, I hope today that we can turn our affections to the things of God as we look into his word. I believe God has something in store for us today. And so if you have your Bible with you this morning, I would ask that you would turn to Psalms 31. There in the Old Testament, you'd find Psalms 31. That is where we will be this morning. I'm fully aware that today is Palm Sunday, and it's usually a day that we celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem as he starts that last and final week, Holy Week. Well, today, I don't want to focus necessarily on that story. I, I want to kind of move a little further on in the timeline and, and really reflect and ponder upon the garden and the cross. I know that you are looking for a sense of hope in all the craziness in which we find ourselves in. Well, today, I, I, I do want to look at hope, but I, I definitely want to take a different journey to that. What I mean by that is I want to focus on sorrow and loss. As we're in this Lent season, it does us well to reflect on these things. And I promise you, next week is a message of hope as we celebrate the resurrection. And so I hope that you do plan on joining us next week as we worship the risen King. We're excited about that. But today, today what I want to do is I want to focus in on sorrow and on grief. Look, as you're turning into Psalms 31, let me, let me just share some uh, quick things with you. Um, I'd encourage you to go to our website, PonkaFWBChurch.com. There you'll find our announcements, you'll find uh, our kids' elements, you'll find prayer requests. I'd encourage you, after you watch this, to make sure, if you're watching this on Facebook, that you would go to our website, as it has much more to offer many other resources for you to engage in. We're working really hard to stay connected. So I just want to encourage you in that. Hopefully you can do that afterwards. Look, um, we are starting the first Sunday in a new month. As we start the month of April, I took some time to really kind of reflect upon the past month. I mean, think about March 1st. You see, none of us, I don't think, knew that this was coming and how quickly everything changed. And if I'm honest with you, I'd imagine April will be just as crazy and chaotic as March was. And as we journey through this, I want us to be honest with ourselves. You see, I've had conversations over the past week of some of them even with you, and I've heard certain phrases and certain words of, of like sadness and of sorrow. I, I, I've heard of people feeling overwhelmed and, and fe people feeling a sense of grief. Almost like we're mourning something. This past week, I also stumbled across an article by N.T. Wright that he talked about this concept of a prayer of lament. Especially being in the season of Lent, I think it does us well to maybe kind of mourn and grieve. That's the journey we're going to take. And so I, I encourage you to hold on. Don't tune me out. I know that you're looking for hope, but I think today this is good for our soul. And so this is kind of the journey that we'll t take. And, you know, as we focus in on Holy Week and as we're heading toward Good Friday, we want to journey with Jesus. And we want to, we want to kind of embrace this kind of sorrow that he faced. And I want us to engage in that. And so today we will talk about grief and really a lamentation of how we kind of lament with a prayer and how this can be healthy for our soul. Let me give you a definition. Uh, maybe we can have a working definition of what grief is as we kind of move through this service. So a definition I stumbled across and I think is probably helpful for us is that grief is a normal and natural emotional reaction to loss or a change of any kind. Look, I think some of us are grieving the, the change and the things that we have lost and, and really how there is a new normal for us. I, I think it's okay for us to grieve those things. But when we hold grief up, 
with that of what a, a prayer of lament is, those are actually different things. What, what I mean by that, grief is, is a feeling that we feel, that is within us. It is an emotion. It's very raw and it is real, but it is something that we feel. To lament is, is a word that we rarely use in our vocabulary. But what that means is that we take that feeling of grief and we express it with words. And so when we look through scripture, we find that the scripture is littered throughout of these kind of these songs and poems of lament. And so today what I want to do is I, I want to look in Psalms 31 for us to understand of how this plays out. You see, a lament is just us sharing our pain with God, being very vulnerable, being very honest with Him. And I think that's healthy for us. And so that's the journey I want us to take. I, I, I think through Scripture, as I, as I look and kind of examine this, what I see is that the Bible is full of uh, these songs or prayers of lament. If you, if you look through the book of Psalms, one third of the entire book is dedicated to these prayers and poems and songs of lament. Sometimes it gets dark as you read through the Psalms. Not just that, we, we could go to the book of Lamentations as there's this weeping and grieving of this prayer of the loss of the city of Jerusalem. Not just that, and I've already alluded to the fact of Jesus Christ. If we go to the last week, and I, if you can imagine Jesus in the garden, as he, as he cries out, there's this prayer of lament, and he prays to the Father, if it's, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. And Scripture lets us know in the Gospel of Luke that even he sweats drops of blood, even we can go to the cross, and as he's hanging on the cross, we find seven different sayings of Jesus. And, and we find some of those sayings are actually from the book of Psalms, where they are these prayers of lament. Where he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is out of Psalms 22. And even today, in Psalms 31, when we look at this, we'll find in verse 5, that this is something Jesus said. These are the very last words Jesus says from the cross. And so today, journey with me. Don't, don't give up on me just yet. I, I know that you're looking for hope, but you will find that. And so hang in there and let us look at what this means for us to engage in this. I'm not trying to take you into a dark place at all. But I do want you to know something. That God is with us and God knows your hurts and your heartache and your heartbreak. And he's with us through the sorrow and the sadness and the pain that we face. Being a part of this pandemic, I think and I believe that many of us are journeying through this emotion of grief. So today, if you would look with me, David is, is the author of this particular psalm. And if you'd like to follow along, look with me in Psalms 31. I want to read the first two verses. And then we're going to journey down into verse 9 and 10. So let's start Psalms 31, starting in verse 1. It says this, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defense to save me. Now, if you would scroll down into verse 9. Look with me in verse 9. It says, Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye wastes away with grief. Yes, my soul and my body, for my life is spent with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity, and my bones waste away. This is the word of the Lord. If you would, take a moment with me to ask God to bless our time in his word this morning. If you would close your eyes with me and let's pray. Father, we need you in this moment. I ask you, there are those that are struck, struggling through grief and sorrow and sadness that you would bring 
hope and healing into their life. Allow us to embrace, to embrace this emotion of grief. Be with us today. And we ask all of this in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, today um, I have several things that I want us to maybe understand as we're kind of dealing with this pandemic. Maybe several things that we can kind of pull from the text that would help us. And so if you were to read through Psalms 31, you see David bouncing back and forth from, from really gloom to glory, from despair into hope, from misery into mercy, and he's He's kind of all over the place. And I, I think for some of us today, we can relate. And so let me share with you several things that I want us really to, to pull from the text this morning. Point number one is simply this. The emotion of grief should be expressed in a prayer of lament. So we've already defined those, those words of grief and lament. But let me say that again. The emotion of grief should be expressed in a prayer of lament. Look, grief is real and it is right when we experience this. It's normal and natural for us as we lose something or as if there's this drastic change in our life. And I really believe this, that lament is a language of loss. And we cry out to God. And so here's what I want us to do. I want us to maybe identify the real pain of loss in your own life. If, if you would look with me in verse 9 and verse 10 of chapter 31, it says this, Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye waste away with grief. It goes on and says, Yes, my soul and my body. Verse 10, For my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. And so he talks in a very poetic way of what it means to experience grief and loss and sadness and sorrow within us. And so we can identify that. And so hear, hear me, church. Here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to fill in the blank. If I ask the question, I'm grieving over blank. Fill that in. Whatever you're grieving over right now, for some of us, Grieving over really our job. Maybe right now you are, are laid off. You're on furlough and you don't know financially what that's going to look like. And so you grieve that. And that's good. That's natural. You should. Or maybe it's just the, the chaotic kind of idea of working from home and, and, and even with your kids there and how difficult that is. And you you grieve what is normal as in missing going in and being with your co-workers and working together. It's okay to grieve that. Maybe it's school and, and the fact that you are no longer with your classmates. Maybe it's for teachers that you're no longer engaging with your kids face to face. It's okay for us to grieve that. I think of my mother. My, my mom is a teacher and she retires this year and she had no clue that spring break would be the last time she would see her students. She grieves that fact, and rightfully so. And so I want you to fill in that blank. I'm grieving over blank. What is it in your life? Maybe, maybe it's the cancellation of certain events or activities or vacations or trips. Maybe it's with weddings or, or certain celebrations that have been postponed or canceled. Look, some people through this time can't even have a funeral because of this. And this is something we should mourn and grieve. Hey, can I be honest with you? I, I think my fill in the blank um, is about church. I, I miss meeting together. I honestly do. And I grieve the fact that all through the month of April, even through next Sunday, Easter, that we will not be together. It's heartbreaking. And so for us this morning, as, as we look into David, and David says, look, my eyes kind of waste away with grief. He, he feels this emotion. Twice does he use this word, this phrase, grief. And so he obviously is feeling this. And what he does is he is expressing this with a psalm of a, a, a lament. 
It's a limitation. Can I, can I encourage you some, to do something? I, I want you to take your grief, whatever you identify, and I, I want you to express that to God. Something healthy for us to do so. Once again, you find it littered throughout all of Scripture. And David does it here, and we should do it. And so I know you don't need my permission, but I'm going to give you permission anyways. I give you permission to lament, to embrace what you feel, and then to share that to God. I want you to do that. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to mourn and grieve over all the changes that we face. And if I, if I really want to get to a very real level, we should be grieving the fact that there are people in hospitals dying because of this pandemic. That should break our heart. That our healthcare system is overwhelmed. We should grieve that. And, and I'm not telling us to, to put on some uh, fake face and, 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 and put on some... Uh, to fake it and pretend like everything's okay when it's not. It's not. Things have changed drastically for us. And so what we are to do is to embrace it. It is okay for us to feel sad. I think of Ecclesiastes where it tells us there's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Look, it is, it is a time right now that we are in that we should be mourning and grieving it is okay for us to do so. And so I think when we do that, when we embrace that, to know that it is okay, it is kind of this cleansing river of an emotional release that we can say, okay, I am sad in this moment. My life has drastically changed. And it's good for us to acknowledge that, to take that feeling and then to kind of express that in prayer to God. That is a prayer of lament. And I encourage you to do that. You see, what it is, is that oftentimes we're not good with grief. We don't handle it well. And so we do one of two things. We either kind of suppress that and we kind of sweep it under the, the rug and we pretend that everything is okay. And so maybe you're, you're doing that right now. Or maybe you try to numb yourself to what you feel. And so for many of us, we numb that through entertainment to stay busy. So we binge watch all this stuff on television because we don't want to deal with what we're feeling on the inside. And see, Christianity is the opposite of those things. God is actually telling us to fill our feelings, to embrace that, and then to take those feelings and to cry out to God a prayer of lament. And so point number one is simply that today, that we take this idea of our emotion of grief and now we express that in a prayer of lament. And lament allows us to take a journey. You see, grieving is painful, but it is very necessary for us. Don't pretend like everything is okay when it is not. And I think in order for us to recover and to journey through this emotion of grief is that we have to face it. We have to stand in it and we have to process it. That's what I'm encouraging you to do. To take what you feel and express it to God. That's point number one this morning. That brings us to our second point. The second point that I want us to see is that a prayer of lament is actually an act of faith. Maybe you feel guilty to say, all right, God, here's all the things that I'm upset about. Here's all the things that I'm struggling with. Maybe you, you feel like you're weak and not strong because you're doing that. Maybe you feel like it is uh, an act of doubt or frustration. But I want you to see it as an act of faith. What I think is fascinating, if you were to read the entirety of Psalms 31, you see time and time again that David talks about his trust in the Lord. Even when David doesn't understand and even when David is dealing with grief, he says, I'm still trusting in the Lord. God, I don't understand why, but I still trust in you. Look, that is an act of faith. I, I, I want you to see this. Look with me in verse one. Go back 
into verse 1 of Psalms 31. It says this, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Right at the beginning, he says, I put my trust in you. If, if you look in verse 6, scroll down to verse 6, it says at the very end of that, but I trust in the Lord. Scroll with me down into verse 14. It says this, but as for me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. Again, if, if you look in, down into verse 19, oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you which you have prepared for those who trust in you. You see, even though David in this psalm is dealing with the emotion of grief and he, he uses that as a prayer of lament, he's still using that prayer of lament as an act of faith. You see, it is that of a cry, a cry for help. And if you're hurting today, church, I want you to cry out to God. God is a God that cares about us. I, I think, look, look with me, I just want to read this to us in the first four verses of this particular psalm. Look what David says. Back into verse 1, it says this, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me. Now, here's what he's asking. It is a cry of help. Deliver me. In your righteousness. Verse 2, bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defense to save me. He goes on in verses 3 and 4 using those same words. Verse 3, for you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net. He goes on and he just, it is a cry of help. Maybe this could be your prayer today. God, deliver me. Deliver me from what I'm feeling in this moment. Deliver me from my circumstance. And, and I, think, I, I think if we're honest, it is concerning the time and the situation in which we find ourselves in. I, I think it's natural for us to be concerned. Here we are. What we do with that is that we don't hide it and we don't suppress it. We don't numb it, but we embrace it and we turn that back to God. God, be merciful to us. And so here, here, uh, here's what I want you to know today is that I want your prayer of lament to be an act of faith. Grieve the things that, that you have lost during this time. I want you to grieve that. I want you to cry out to God. But this brings us to our third point this morning. We'll wrap all of this up. Here's what I want us to really plan for as we move forward to Easter. It's simply this point number three is that a prayer of lament clings to the promise of hope. A prayer of lament clings to the promise of hope. Yes, we cry out. And there's this sorrow and grief in which we are expressing to God. But that is attached to something beautiful and something profound. It is attached to that of hope. Go with me now in the text. And I want you to go down to the very last verse. The very last verse of Psalms 31. It says, be of good courage. He's ending this psalm as he cries out for God and he's being honest with God. He says this, be of good courage. and He shall strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. You see, we are to do this. We are to take this emotion to cry out to God in a prayer of lament. But what we do is that we cling to the promise of hope. That God is in control. That there will be better days. That the sun will come up. That he can take our sorrow and he can turn it to joy. There is hope for us. And I think of Christ. Christ is the example. And if Christ had these prayers of lament, then we should embrace them as well. And I think of Jesus in the garden as he prays. 
and the agony and sorrow and, and the sadness in which he's facing in that moment. But, but the good news is that Sunday is coming. That the resurrection offers us great hope. And I, that's something we celebrate next week. This week, I want you to embrace the darkness of grief. That is the Lent season in which we're in. And so we mourn. And we're sad, but we cling to hope. See, there's a, a promise that you find through the text. Here's what I want you to do. I'm just encouraging you to cry out to God, for you to identify what you're grieving, and, and for you to lament in a prayer. But let me offer you some hope that we find in the text here. I want to remind you of who God is. If you were to read the entirety of this chapter, you see David keeps coming back to who God is. God is good. Look with me. We, we already saw it in verse 1. It says, in you, O Lord, I put my trust. Uh, and then he goes on and look with me down into verse 2. It says, bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock and my refuge, a fortress of defense. That's where God is. He's a rock and a refuge, someone that we can hide in, someone that we can find peace in. That is who he, he is. And so when we cry out, we remember who God is. Go down into verse 19. Verse 19, what does it say? Oh, how great is your goodness. Go down into verse 21. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off before his eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications when I cry out to you. That, that is a, 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 that of hope. He's saying, look, in the midst of all this, I cry out, but I know, I know that you hear me. I know that you hear my supplication. You are good and kind. So church, I just want to remind you. During this season of lament, I want you to remember who our God is. Not just that, but we are to remember that he actually cares even when we don't. God cares for us. I could take you to Psalm after Psalm of, of different times where there's these prayers of lament, but the psalmist always brings us back to the fact that God cares for us. I think of Psalms 34, just several chapters ahead of this, where it says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and He saves those who are crushed in spirit. Or Psalms 147, where He says, He heals the brokenhearted, and He binds up their wounds. And so I don't want you to rush through this season of grief. I want you to embrace this, knowing that our God actually cares to know that this is actual an act of faith, that we're going to trust even in the dark days that we face, even when things don't make sense, we still proclaim the goodness of God. You see, grief is actually waiting on the Lord. These prayers of lament and holding on to hope is waiting on the Lord. Can I tell you something today? I want you to patiently wait on the Lord. And I don't know what you're dealing with. You see, that's the, the strange thing. This, is, this pandemic has actually affected the whole world. Everyone has their own stories. Some people are dealing with health, health issues right now. Other people financial. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what's producing grief in your life. But I do know that my God cares. And my God knows all your sorrow. And so today, as we enter into Holy Week, I want us to reflect. I want us to ponder. What does it mean to give a prayer of lament? You can go to Psalms 77 and you can read that. You can go to Psalms 130, you could read. There, there's, there's many Psalms that we could read but I, what I want to encourage you to do is that I want you to read the story of Jesus in the garden. And the heaviness of that. 
You see, we feel that within our soul. The, heavy, the heaviness of grief that, that weighs upon our shoulders. And so today, I, I want to end with hope by pointing us to next week. This week, I want you to just embrace what you feel. Don't pretend like you're okay when you're not. It's okay to shed tears. It's okay to grieve how your life has drastically changed over the course of the last three weeks. It's okay for you to embrace that. And so that's the journey I want us to take, church. I hope that you kind of engage with this, that we can somehow enter into this time. I want to conclude by inviting you this Friday to tune in on Facebook as well as our website at 6 o'clock on Good Friday as we will take part in communion. Once again, it allows us to embrace the sacrifice of the cross. It prepares our hearts for the celebration of Easter. And so church, I, I want you to know that I love you. I care about you. I know that this is probably not the message that you were looking for or longing for. But this season, I just during this week, I want you to chew on these truths. May you take how you feel and may you express that in a prayer of lament. So let me pray over you um, that God would give us the strength to journey through the darkness that we face. Let's, uh, let's pray. Father, I ask that you would bless us. We need that. God, help us not to, to make light of, of the change that has happened within us, but help us to take that, to embrace it. Help us to understand it. And so God, I, I, I ask that we can turn these emotions, the raw emotions that we feel, that we can turn them back to you. We can cry out knowing that you are a God that hears us, that we can be honest with you. You long for our honesty, and so help us to do that. Help us to journey this week with these principles in mind. God, I love you. I thank you for the work of the cross. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you again for worshiping with us today. I hope next week that you join us as we celebrate. And I'm excited about Easter. And so God bless you. May you go forth in his peace and shine the light of Christ. God bless. Thanks.